his statement. Now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Namibia to introduce the intervention of uh, the head of state. Madam Vice President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, I have the greatest pleasure and honor to introduce His Excellency Dr. Hage Gottfried Gaingop, President of the Republic of Namibia, who will present his contribution to the general debate during this historic 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly through a pre-recorded video statement. I thank you. Your Excellency Volkan Boskir, President of 75th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellencies, Head of State and Government, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, I wish to extend warm congratulations to you and the people of the Republic of Turkey on your election as President of 75th Session of the General Assembly. I assure you of Namibia's support and cooperation during your tenure as President of the General Assembly. I express great appreciation to your predecessor, His Excellency Professor Tijani Mohammed Bande, son of Africa, for his outstanding stewardship of the work of our organization, particularly during a very difficult and trying period. I'm also privileged to express my admiration and appreciation for the performance of our Secretary General during this challenging period the world is facing. The 75th anniversary theme, the future we want, the United Nations we need, reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism, confronting COVID-19 through effective multilateral action, reminds us of our shared humanity and the reality of interconnected world. As we face COVID-19 pandemic and its devastating effects, we should reaffirm our collective commitment to cooperate in a world governed by international law and a multilateral system in which no one should feel left out. The COVID-19 pandemic has altered the trajectories in our socioeconomic livelihoods and our interactions with one another. While not perfect, multilateralism and rules-based order are essential tools in strengthening strengthening governance, protecting civil liberties, and the fundamental rights of the people we serve in our respective countries. An effective rules-based multilateral system is our insurance policy against existential threats such as wars, nuclear proliferation, pandemics, and climate change. It is therefore of utmost importance that we continue to defend multilateralism at all costs. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has plunged the world into an acute health and economic crisis, the severity of which has not been seen in a century. It has disproportionately affected some countries more than others, exposing us, exacerbating vulnerabilities and inequalities within and among countries. The adverse socioeconomic effects of COVID-19 pandemic compounding existing challenges such as high debt burdens, reduced fiscal revenues, capital outflows, and lack of adequate and sufficient access to financial markets does not bode well for the future of developing countries. This is due to the fact that the unfolding crisis could halt or reverse gains in poverty eradication, food security, and inequality. 
It is why this health emergency should lead to an even deeper sense of urgency and impactful multilateral solidarity. The world needs it more than ever before. In this respect, we commend the UN Secretary General, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, for the launch of two billion US dollar multi partner trust fund for COVID-19 response and recovery. While we also acknowledge the debt relief as initiatives announced by the IMF, the World Bank, and G20, I encourage all our partners to facilitate their emergency lending mechanisms and accelerate technical support to even so-called higher middle-income countries such as Namibia. This is vital to ensure access to social protection and basic services, sustainable economic activity, and protection of jobs and incomes. Mr. President, Namibia commends the World Health Organization for all its targeted efforts in fighting COVID-19, including the global development of vaccine. This vaccine, once developed, should become a global public good, accessible to all, freely and equitably. Namibia stands ready to partner in such development for the benefit of our citizens and the world at large. Environmental degradation is a persistent and growing problem, and quite literally a deadly threat to the security of our peoples. COVID-19 pandemic has diverted resources from climate change and related mitigation efforts. The people of Namibia continue to suffer major environmental disasters such as floods, drought, and water scarcity. We therefore should ensure that we rededicate ourselves to commitments of the Paris Agreement. As a member of the high-level panel for a sustainable ocean economy, Namibia reaffirms its commitment towards tackling the great challenges that the world's oceans face, ranging from global warming, ocean acidification, marine pollution, including plastic pollution, and sustainable exploitation of its living marine, unsustainable exploitation of its living marine resources. We commend the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Norway, Her Excellency Elna Stolberg, for developing this outstanding initiative and look forward to working with her in Norway and the other members of the panel to address these challenges. Mr. President, when I addressed this August Assembly one year ago, as a member of the African Union Committee of 10 on reform of the United Nations Security Council, I expressed my desire to see the marking of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations as an opportunity to conclude the reform of the United Nations Security Council. Namibia reiterates that the African continent wishes to see a reformed council, which is reflective of its common African position, as outlined in the Israeli consensus and the CIRTE declaration. I take this opportunity to welcome and thank those who have expressed support for the, uh, for the common African position. As we prepare to mark the 20th anniversary of the Resolution 2013-25 of Women, Peace and Security, a resolution which was adopted under the Namibian presidency of the Security Council in October 2000, we must celebrate the achievements thus far while also recognizing that many challenges still remain. I look forward to the opening of the International Women's Peace Center in Namibia next month. The Peace Center is intended to become an institute of excellence for mediation and conflict prevention. 
to support and ensure that women are given adequate tools to contribute to humanity's future. Mr. President, the 17th Interconnected Sustainable Development Goals and their promise to leave no one behind by 2030 ring hollow for the peoples of Palestine and Western Sahara who still remain under occupation. They are left behind as a nation that has experienced the outpouring of international solidarity during dark days of our struggle for independence. We wish to express our continued support for the right to self-determination and freedom of the peoples of Palestine and Western Sahara. We also hope that the search for UN Secretary General Special Envoy for Western Sahara will be concluded very soon. Furthermore, we express our support for a settlement that will bring a just, lasting, and comprehensive peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Despite the political and diplomatic setbacks, in particular continued threats of annexation of Palestinian territory, we remain hopeful for a fair and comprehensive peace solution that will guarantee the rights of all Palestinian peoples and ensure they are returned to their homes while safeguarding peace and security to Israeli people as well. As the world combats the COVID-19 pandemic, some member states face more obstacles in combating this virus than others, including those which have sanctions imposed on them. In support of the pursuit of economic development, unity and prosperity for the sister country of Zimbabwe, I once again call on the lifting of sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe. President Emerson Manangakwa has been pursuing reforms that will enable the people of Zimbabwe to get on a path of sustainable development and peace. Therefore, the continued sanctions undermine these efforts to develop the people of Zimbabwe. Mr. President, Namibia reiterates her deep concern over the continuation of the extraterritorial economic, financial, and commercial embargo imposed on the people of Cuba. We continue to express our support for the government and the people of Cuba and call for the unconditional lifting of the embargo and for respect of the sovereignty of Cuba. In the spirit of creating a more just, peaceful, and caring world in which we foster peaceful and harmonious coexistence among, amongst all nations, Namibia looks forward to the day when relations between the United States of America and Cuba will be restored fully. For the past 75 years, the United Nations has distinguished itself as a champion for equality and unity. It is critical time when we are faced with a multitude of challenges that threaten our future. We look upon this great organization to once again provide the definitive answers to our problems. Therefore, let us embrace one another and pull together in the spirit of multilateralism in the interests of achieving the SDGs and in the interest of safeguarding global peace and the human dignity of every man, woman, and a child in the world. I thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I want to thank His Excellency the President of Namibia for the statement just made. Now, I would like to give the floor to the distinguished representative of Liberia to introduce the 
statement of the head of state.